So that is the thing. I told just one person, my attendant or somebody, I can't remember, to book my ticket for me. And I said, don't tell anybody, of course. Oh, I forgot, or maybe I didn't tell, or maybe I forgot. And she told the other attendant. And the attendant has her best friend. And the best friend has boyfriend. Boyfriend has mama. Mama has papa. Papa has, uh, you know, co-workers and whomever, the disciples. They all went to the airport. And I became <laughs> a sudden star, uh, airport star, yeah. So I told her that was at the beginning, you know. Even sometimes I say, I'm thinking of going to Japan. I didn't even book ticket, I didn't plan anything yet. Everybody know, Master going to Japan, and Japanese <laughs> disciple preparing everything already. Oh, God. So I say, that's why I don't tell anybody anymore. I even go everywhere alone now. Yes, with my own suitcase. Pack my own things and book ticket at the airport. I don't book ticket at home. I don't, I don't know how to book online. And if I tell somebody to help me to book online, then everybody will be a big line at the airport again. And at the other end of the destination would also be a line. I don't book online anymore. <laughs> I'm afraid of the line. <laughs> because it's inconvenient for the people. It's very convenient for you, I know that. Just inconvenient <laughs> for the airport personnel, the police and the traffic and, you know. <laughs> so one time I went alone, I came out alone by taxi. No? I even go by taxi nowadays. And then the personnel at the airport, you know, the one who check your, check your passport when you pass inside the gate or the immigration, and she asked me, nobody sent you off today? <laughs> she even know that. <laughs> Yeah, she said in Chinese, So I did not understand the word beer. I said, what mean beer? She said, normally you come, a lot of people send you off, and when you come back, a lot of people see you. Today nobody see you, see you off. I said, no, no, I, I, I left quietly, <laughs> alone, a taxi. Yeah, I did not book, I came to the airport, book ticket. <laughs> And then I went all alone. The same when I went on the European tour. You saw me only alone, huh? That's why I had to drive the stick shift car, because there was no taxi anymore. All of you took all the taxis that's available. Either that, or you drive your own car and took other people. And when they saw me, they all come in together. Master, we have car! We have car, come with us. Oh, then I'm so scared. <laughs> I run, I run and the stick ship or not, I just, I just give gas. Oh my God. First time in my life I ever drove the stick shift. And the man said, it's the last car that I can rent. Take it or leave it. Yes. And the manager hurried to go home because of her birthday daughter or something. I said, I never drove this before. He said, never mind, just open the key. You know, here is the, uh, is the, the brake, and when you want to uh, s switch uh, the gear, you, you brake, and then you freeze the, the right foot here, the left foot there, and then you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, and it keeps stopping on the highway all the time. And I have to start it all over again, so I keep the blinking light on all the time, and everybody pass by and feeling something. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, I do just smile. <laughs> <laughs> and they know there must be some idiot and driving on the highway. I wonder how the police even let <laughs> such a dum dum drive the car. <laughs> but the Slovenia people, they're very friendly. They did not judge me too much. They just look, look, and when they see me smiling, they also smile. Oh, oh okay, la. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> and I survived. Yeah, all this stopping in the middle. It stopped a well, hundred times. The car just stopped by itself. I don't know why. Maybe I, I pushed the wrong uh, foot or something, and it just stopped like that. Yeah. I had no idea. And then I just fumbling and try again, and then it works again. And then whenever I need to stop, and then it won't run again. If I stop, then it stops forever. <laughs> so we try to fumble how to do it again. Yeah. Already a very bad driver, and then had to drive the car like that. The car that I have never seen in my life. 
You know, in Slovenia, that's the best car you have. <laughs> I didn't know what brand is that even, yes. And uh, the highway was not very big, is it? Any Slovenian people here? Or have you been there? Any of you? The highway of Slovenia is like the, the national lane here. Yeah. Maybe that's good also because people don't drive so fast. <laughs> I'm spared my life. Yeah, I thought I was murmuring, you know? But I cannot avoid it because the European tour was very tightly packed, you know? One day, one, uh, next, next two days, another country. So disciples are always everywhere, you know, in the airport at the same time with me. Yeah. And I wonder what kind of brain I had going on such a trip like that, all alone. Not booked hotel, nothing. Just went everywhere and booked ticket, just like that. And driving the car that you never driven before. <laughs> My God. But the condition is like that. I cannot have more comfortable at that time. I cannot. I cannot afford the comfort. I cannot. I had to go alone and do all that alone. And many other difficult situations, you know? Like dragging my suitcase alone up to the staircase, because sometimes you don't have the elevator. Not every country has, or not every airport has where you want to go. And dragging it far away and then go up and down the staircase and etc., etc. No time to eat, no time to drink, rushing and all that stuff. But I just had to do it. Just like Lord Mahavira here, he had to wait five months and 26 days in order to find food. <laughs> After five months and 26 days, you know he didn't have to eat anymore. You understand, right? He don't have to. But he just had to do it. He just had to go beg it because that's the way it arranged, just like I have to go through a lot of trouble wearing all these clothes and you know what, inside also. <laughs> and hooking this here behind here, hooking in front here. Yeah, and wearing these and the high heels and all that. <laughs> well, at least in Vietnam, you know, later I found out that one of the master of uh, Vietnamese Buddhism, he predicted that there would be a woman with high heel <laughs> to come. <laughs> and take care of the, the real religion, <laughs> something like that, you know, leading the religious community. Mm. Well, at least if you don't understand why I have to wear high heels, now you can ask these kind of masters <laughs> or their disciples. <laughs> okay, yeah? <laughs> and then with all jewelry all over the body and uh, wear nice clothes and stuff like that, they all predict it. Yeah? So, okay. Well, at least I'm doing God's will, okay? I don't care about what anybody else thinks. I cannot care anymore. But it's a lot of work, a lot of work instead of this. Yeah. This is the life that you should aspire to. Simple. You know, two, three pair of clothes, you're happy, you're free. True freedom is the best. It's the best of everything. Yes. You know, live like Lord Mahavira. Yeah? not even a stitch on your body. It is very funny how any practitioner, a true practitioner, you know, the one who will be master or something, will be tested to the extent of their last endurance, yeah? But that's the way it is, actually. Just like gold, you know? It's not beautiful like this, huh? It has to be grilled in the very vicious fire, yeah, and then had to be beaten and have to be confined into mold and shape and then have to be even sculpted with chisel and with hammer and sticking and nail and drill and hole and in order to put diamond in, they must drill the holes, many holes, for example. And then it become a beautiful piece of jewelry. That is the envy of the world. Similarly, most great person in history has gone to a lot of test, hammer, trimming, and unbearable situation. They have to bear the unbearable. They have to endure the unendurable. Many things like that. And then you are tamed, then you're trimmed.
you sculpt into a perfect shape inside that you're ready to do a great job. Then you have no more attachment to anything at all. Having or not having, <laughs> to you, is the same. You don't even shy, shy away from fame, but you don't care about fame. You are just whatever the arrangement of heaven. You are just that. You just do whatever you have to do, regardless of your own liking or not liking. Yeah. But at that time, after you've been drill and grill and hammer and chisel and punch and hole and fire, <laughs> everything already, I think everything else left you. Or the ego gone. Then God can manifest. So if you want to be great, like Lord Mahavira, learn from His lessons. Like we should not fear hardship. We should not desire for comfort. Yes. If you have a comfortable place, okay, you use it. If you don't have it, ah, you take care of yourself. Use a tent or anything. So you excuse me if I don't want to build any more building, okay? No matter what we build, we can never build enough anyway. Hey. <laughs> And it's okay. <laughs> I don't know why you cry, but here people do all kind of weird things, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> why? Just feel so sorry when you said huh? you have to be molded and hammered and, and made holes and everything. You have to go through the unbearable. It's okay. Uh, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. It's the way it's arranged. Yeah? At least I look beautiful. I have clothes. Lord Mahavira did not have any clothes. And he didn't eat for five and a half months. Here they feed me a lot. <laughs> I'm so worried I get fat even. You're yeah? amazingly beautiful, Master. <laughs> Thank you. I'm just joking. Could nobody say I'm beautiful? I have to praise myself. Otherwise I cannot <laughs> bear all this. At home I immediately take off and then just put on my old slippers and old, old whatever clothes I have there. Because I keep changing places also, so, so I don't always have the monk clothes around. I like it. It's simple. It's a nice color. You just feel light and comfortable. Mm. That's why monks they wear this kind of clothes. They feel very comfortable. <laughs> you know, it doesn't feel any bother. You feel like you don't wear anything. <laughs> it's very simple. And I was thinking I left home for a simple life, that's why I was laughing. <laughs> You're dreaming of a simple life, you know, and look at how many husbands and wives and children you have. Yeah. Uh, gray hair children, big no children, flash no children, black children, white children, yellow, red, <laughs> brown in between. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I was dreaming. I was thinking, oh, okay, be a monk. Oh, so good. <laughs> Because I was surrounded with monks and nuns uh, when I was younger, yeah? I went to the temple when I was a kid. Of course, I went to the church also, and I see monks, live Buddhists or, Christ or Christianity, they're all so wonderful. Yeah, they live for others, yeah? They teach the good things only, and they live very simple. That was my ideal, you know? So I thought, oh, being a monk, so nice, <laughs> I thought. I thought yeah. <laughs> it was my dream, and it faded so quickly, quicker than I <laughs> blinked my eyes. <laughs> yeah.